What is up, my friends and fellow busy bees? Now, I don't know how it is where you're located, but for me, things are a little bit slower in the furniture refinishing sales area as of late. I've definitely seen that trend in other areas as well. I'm in a couple Facebook groups of people who do furniture flipping, either as a business or just for their own personal kind of side hustle. And pretty much every single day I see somebody posting something like, this thing hasn't sold, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. Um, saying that sales have been really slow in their area. Is this just me or is this everyone else? It's everyone else too. Everybody's posting about it. I feel like overall, there's a couple things happening. Number one, the economy just isn't as great right now as it has been. There was a lot of money flowing a couple years ago. People were also at home a lot. So they were looking at their spaces, evaluating them, maybe sitting on social media more too and comparing their spaces to other people's. I don't really know what the motivators are, but I definitely saw, you know, around 2022, 2021, a huge uptick in people redoing their spaces, people who weren't previously interested really in interior design and decorating their spaces. And so it's only a couple years past that now. And for most people, they're not redoing their spaces super cyclically. So we're not quite at the point where the thing that they've done is no longer their taste or the trends haven't changed all that much. So what I'm seeing for the most part now are people who just have an interest in interior design that are looking for pieces, maybe people having older pieces like family heirlooms or even like old dining tables and stuff like that that they're just looking to revamp. And also people who are moving into new homes, buying their first home and are looking to furnish it. So things are a little bit slower, but that doesn't necessarily need to be a negative because you can look at it on the positive and take this opportunity to do stuff that you may not have otherwise had time to do at other points in the year. And so I wanted to walk through some of the options for you and for that and maybe a little bit of mindset stuff today if you're also noticing that the sales are not flowing quite as freely as they used to. And I think first and foremost, it's important to say, because I don't know that a lot of people realize this, but pieces don't always sell quickly. And they might for you, and if they do, that's amazing. I hope it keeps up. But for me, for a lot of the people that I talk to in this industry, people who have official businesses doing this, a lot of people don't have pieces sell right away. And I think maybe social media can make it seem like that is the norm, or perhaps The people who have a really large following on social media are just having more people see their pieces that they're working on. They're much more active with their marketing compared to some other people when they're working on pieces. So there's more eyes on that piece. And so somebody may be snagging that before it's even actually completed. Also, a reminder that social media isn't always what it seems. And sometimes people put things up that could be misleading I don't like to talk shit about people like posting on social media, but I think it's an important reality that people need to keep a critical lens in the back of their head about the things that they see on social media. You're only seeing the highlight reel. You may only be seeing the success stories of the pieces that sold really quickly, but that person might have other ones that have been sitting for days, weeks, months, maybe years. You just don't know the full story and a lot of the times we can fill in the blanks with assumptions that are usually much more positive in regards to other people and much more negative in response to ourselves and our own situation. So just remember that and be kind to yourself if you find that you have pieces that are sitting for a while because I do too. I have literally in front of me a set of nightstands that I finished, I don't know, months ago, certainly. I don't even remember which month, but there was snow on the ground and there is no longer snow on the ground. So it's been a little while and I'm honestly not sweating about it too much. It's nothing out of the ordinary. There are some things that you can do to try to get it to sell a little bit quicker, but even still doing some of those things may not make the difference. It could truly just be a timing thing. Because remember, in order to sell a piece, you have to, at the perfect time, post a piece that is the right size, that is the right shape, that is the right height, that is the right color, that is the right sheen, that has the right hardware for a piece that somebody in your area who probably doesn't live very far from you is looking for at that 
same day or within that same week or whatever, or have a search set up that your keywords that you put in your listing happen to also be in the search term of. So like, what are the odds of that happening and that all coming together within 24 hours? Pretty unlikely, depending on what piece you have and depending how populous of an area you live in. So try to remember that if you ever find that you're getting a little bit down in the dumps because a piece isn't selling, it's totally normal to have that thought that I did something wrong or it's not good enough and that's why nobody wants it. But the reality is there's so many other factors at play that it probably has nothing to do with that piece or it not being up to par and probably has everything to do with the fact that the right buyer just hasn't found it yet. So give yourself some grace. I've done previous episodes about different things that you can do if you are trying to get that piece to sell. I'll link those in the show notes of this episode, but things like restaging it, making sure that you have the right lighting, that you have the right decor on the piece, that you're getting all the right angles, that you have enough photos, that you have enough information in the description. There's so many things that you can do without even changing the piece itself. I think a lot of times people start to second guess the color they chose or the hardware they did and they immediately go to changing that. But the sooner you do that, the sooner you're taking money out of your own pocket when you probably don't really need to for the most part, for most pieces, for most people especially if the finish is fine, it's just a matter of you think it's not the right color or something, just let it sit. Even if it's a white or maybe a black, but more so with like the light colors and the whites, you might think like, wow, this is white. This would work in so many spaces and so many homes or a gray, but there are so many shades of white and gray and it might just be not the perfect undertone that somebody's looking for, or it's a little bit too light, or it's a little bit too dark, or it has a little bit too much warm tones in the undertone, or maybe it's a little bit too cool toned in the undertone. So stop being down on yourself and just remember to give it time. I know that having enough space available for pieces to sit for a long time can definitely be an issue. So you can start to get creative sooner if you really need to. But if it's just a matter of you playing the comparison game and looking at other people and thinking this should have sold quicker, just know that it probably shouldn't have. And you're probably just making up a story in your own mind. But while it's quiet and while maybe we have some pieces that are sitting, let's say that you don't have a lot of space to be working on other projects at the time because you can only fit like three dressers or larger pieces in your home to be waiting for sale. There is a whole lot that you could be doing in the meantime while you wait for them to sell. In addition to those things like trying to get it sold by taking new photos and things like that. The first being if you really need to be doing pieces or you just kind of have the itch to keep doing pieces, you can look at doing smaller pieces, things like little side tables, nightstands, plant stands, even doing really small things that you get for free or a really inexpensive price, but you can upgrade them. Things like vases and picture frames and little mirrors. If you redo them in the style that's currently trendy, um, a good idea is to go on to retailers that sell home decor like Pottery Barn, CB2, West Elm, these big retailers that are often pretty expensive and look at what's trending, what are the best sellers, what's new, what are the things that you're seeing in the magazines and see if you can recreate them with pieces that you find for free, that you find at yard sales, that you find at the thrift store. If you can get them for a couple bucks, for example, a mirror, and you can add some molds onto it, you paint it, and then it looks just like a West Elm mirror that you saw that was $800. Maybe you can sell that thing that you got for $5, you invested $10 worth of products into, sell that for $100, $150, $300, like make reference to that item that it looks just like, make sure that you have the keywords in there, that it's a dupe for the West Elm mirror or whatever, and put that into Marketplace and see if you can sell it that way. Those are things that won't take up as much space in terms of having them sitting and waiting to be sold. Those are also things that you can be using to stage your pieces. And sometimes if you stage a piece really nicely when it's for sale, You'll have people message you and ask if they can also purchase the decor items that are in the photos. And if you can get multiple sales out of 
one single photo, then all the better. But I know for me, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a breather from working on furniture, especially lately. You know, I've honestly, I've lost a little bit of the passion for it. I'm not going to lie. I think it's been a lot of doing customs for so long. I just need to kind of like work on my own terms and let my own kind of creative juices out for a little bit. So I will be taking a bit of a break from customs once I finish up the ones that I currently have set in stone. But if you need a break, that's totally fair. I'm telling myself that it's totally fair, so I'm going to tell you that it's totally fair. And there's still things that you can do that are furniture refinishing adjacent, or if you have a business doing this or a side hustle that you still want to grow, but maybe just for a couple months over the summer while things get busy, you're going to pull back from it a little bit. You can still be growing the business in other ways. Things like updating a website or creating a website or a portfolio if you don't already have them. Putting together a marketing strategy if you are really intent on growing this thing and want to dive into other mediums of media in the coming weeks, months, or year even. Like planning ahead and taking the time to sit down and use your brain for that kind of thinking while you're still in the headspace of keeping this business, but maybe not in the headspace of wanting to physically be working with your hands on the pieces is a great alternative. And these are things that tend to get pushed aside in the times when we're really busy and we're working on multiple pieces, especially if you have custom work that's lined up with certain dates that you're trying to just whip it out to get the last thing out of the garage so that you can get the next thing in on the date that you said that they could drop it off. It can feel like a bit of a hamster wheel at times and you don't always have extra time in the day, especially if you have other obligations like children or other hobbies or a busy social life, like whatever that looks like for you. You may not have a lot of extra time in your day to fit in updating your website or posting on social media as much as you would like to. And all of that is fine in the moment, but When things are quiet and you have the opportunity to, you can still stay productive and get those things out of the way. Even if it's a yearly thing that you do, updating your website, adding new photos. I know for me, that's one thing I need to do soon. The portfolio photos on my website probably haven't been updated since like 2022. So certainly there's some stuff on there that I probably don't even want to showcase anymore because my skills have gotten much better. I get a much better finish now that I've lived and I've learned. And I also have a different kind of design style and I've worked on more diverse pieces that I want to showcase on there. But the reality is I just haven't had the time over the last year and a half. (laughs) Year and a half, yeah. Awkward. Okay, so you know, it falls off. It's fine. Life moves quickly. We're not beating ourselves up over it, but this quiet time is a great opportunity to do so. Other things that you can do if you are someone who isn't naturally tidy and organized is take this time to do a deep clean of your workshop where you keep any of your tools and your products and kind of take everything off the shelves, wipe everything down, take stock of what you have. I bet you'll find that you have doubles of some products that would be useful to be aware of. There's certainly been times when things get messy or I'm not putting things back when I go and look for a certain stain color that I could have sworn I had, but then I'm like, you know what, maybe I used it up on that last piece go out, purchase a new one, and then eventually realize that I did still in fact have that one, but it was hidden under some stuff, so I didn't know that I had it at the time. So that's just more money that I'm wasting that I don't necessarily need to be spending at that time. So keeping stock of what you have. And I also find like going through the paints that I have, the stains and other products can also inspire me to do different combinations that I haven't thought of or just reminding myself of what's there so that I can utilize those colors next time I'm doing a piece on my own. Or if a client requests a color for customs, I can be aware if I already have that in my stash versus typically I'll just immediately go and put an order in for that paint so that it will be there on time. But I should be looking at my stash because I got a pretty big stash and also those products don't last forever. So I don't want something sitting on the shelves for years and years to be there. And then I'm like, oh, I'm actually going to use that color, get everything primed and ready to go, go pull out that paint color. And then it's all dried up or super goopy and won't give a nice finish. So take the time to organize clean and tidy. 
If you've also felt very kerfuffled and like you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, I find not only is this really therapeutic to do and just like nice to get into the zone and clean things up and get organized, afterwards it feels like a ton of bricks has lifted off of your shoulders when you walk into a tidy, organized workshop. You know where everything is. Everything has a place. Nothing's dirty. There's not dust all over everything. Like it feels very freeing and it's like a new beginning. And that can feel really nice if you felt overwhelmed or overstimulated or overworked as of late. And so instead of burning rubber at both ends, why don't you take the time to step back, decompress, reset, and then start from scratch and move forward, feeling much more rejuvenated and renewed, both you yourself and also your space. And while we're on the topic of it, let's also say that if you don't feel like fucking working on furniture, you don't have to fucking work on furniture. You're the only one creating that expectation in your brain, unless you are currently contractually obligated to work on custom work. You could take a break at whatever time. And guess what? That could be an indefinite break. And that's totally fair to do. And I am here giving you the permission to do so right here and right now. Even if this is your whole identity, you have a full business riding on this, you, oh, well, okay. I'll put a small caveat. If you're doing this full time and you rely on it as a source of income, let's apply to some other jobs and secure something else before you step away from it. P.S. That's not my intention. I'll just say that. Having recently acquired a new job, that's not in my game plan, but I am I am pulling back a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to stay, don't worry. But if you don't love it anymore, if it is causing you anxiety, if it feels like an obligation more than an excitement and a hobby and something that you do for you and your mental health or your creativity or your financial stability, like whatever your reason for doing it is, As long as it's still fulfilling that for you and feels good for you, keep doing it. But if it doesn't, you are under no obligation to continue to do so. It's so easy to feel like there's that sunken cost in it because you've probably purchased products, you've probably purchased some tools, you've maybe invested money in subscriptions or apps or inventory that you have sitting that you haven't worked on yet. But If you really don't want to do this anymore, don't let anyone feel like you have to. Definitely think it over if it's like just today you're feeling sick of it. To step away and let it simmer for a while, like really think about the decision, but you don't have to keep doing something that you don't like to do. You only live life once. Don't spend it doing something that you don't enjoy doing. Don't spend it with people you don't enjoy being around. Don't spend it unhappy, period. We are in charge of our own lives, of our own destiny. Like, why would you spend, nay, why would you waste time, energy, money, precious minutes on this earth, in this life, this one life that we have, doing something that you don't like? Oh, well, I'm not a quitter and I gotta stick things out. No, you don't. Says who? Did your parents say that to you growing up? Cool, you are an adult. Guess what? reality check. You can do what you want. It's very freeing once you come to that realization. You can do whatever the fuck you want with your life. And I suggest, you don't have to listen to me because who the fuck am I, but I suggest doing what you like and what you want to do. That's probably why you started doing this work because you started trying it out a little bit and then you really liked doing it. So you leaned into that and kept doing it more. That was a good choice. But If you start doing something else that you like just as much and it pulls away from your passion for this or you find that you no longer have an interest in this for some other reason or you don't have the time for it and so it feels not so great because you'd rather be using your time doing something else, then do that. You can sell off the inventory that you currently have. You can sell off the paint. You can find other uses for the paint. I have used furniture paint that I have on my cupboards, on my front door. You can use it on your walls. Like there's so many other uses for the paint. You can use it on home decor. Or you know what? You can just say, you know what? That was a great point in my life. I'm so happy to have it. Maybe I hang on to this paint. Maybe I just chuck it. But that's the cost of doing business, baby. And move on. Don't spend time doing things you don't like to do. Okay. And another thing you can do during this time where things are a little bit more quiet is take the opportunity to do things that you haven't had the opportunity to do that will help benefit your future self. So if there's somewhere that you want to go in your business, something that you want to learn to do, something that you know you could improve on but you haven't had the time available to do so, 
now's your time. If you want to get better at taking photos, why don't you look up YouTube tutorials or take a master class or find other free resources that are available to help you take better photos, just generally speaking, or find someone that teaches you how to take photos of furniture or other product photography styles of courses. If you know that one day you want to offer a digital course, why don't you take the opportunity to start learning about digital courses and then look into marketing and sales strategies and gaining all of this knowledge that you will eventually put to good use You may not need it right in this moment, but it doesn't hurt to learn it now when you have the time available. Because when things start ramping up and things get busy, that's the stuff that will fall to the wayside and you'll just keep pushing off those goals and intentions longer and longer. And instead of quote unquote wasting the time now, you can do a little bit every day, every couple days, every week, every month, whatever, while things are quiet, that will help to benefit you later. And maybe You don't even end up utilizing it later, but in my opinion, I'm a lifelong learner, so I always love learning about new things, acquiring knowledge. It probably will come to good use at some point in time, even just a little tidbit of it in a trivia night. You know, you never know, but a lot of things can bleed into other areas of your life. For example, photography. Okay, you'll probably end up taking better photos of furniture, but also you'll probably end up taking better photos, period. So you'll get better memories to capture of your kids down the road or moments to capture with your loved ones or whatever that looks like, you know? There's always multi-uses for these skills that we can acquire. So for me, it's not seen as a waste of time. And I have that thirst for knowledge, so that feels really good and feels really productive for me to be doing in times when I'm looking for something to do or looking for a new thing to capture my attention. And last but not least, if you want to, take this time to relax. What are things that make you feel good and rejuvenated and fulfilled that have nothing to do with anything? Do those things. This is your time. This is the downtime. You can spend this time being anxious and worried and stressed out about the fact that things aren't selling, or you can look at it as this is your break. This is the break that you've wished that you could have, and so what are you going to do with it? Call up those friends you've been meaning to hang out with, but you've been stuck in the workshop whenever they've asked you to come out. Go find nature. Go be in nature. Fuel your soul. Read a book. Have a nap. Lay in the sun. Do the things that you feel guilty taking the time to do when you have a custom on the go or when you're in the middle of a project and you are just really eager to get it finished and out the door. Take the time. Do it now. It can be hard to do and there's always an endless to-do list of doing the dishes, doing the laundry, cleaning the kitchen, washing the floors, folding the laundry, cutting the lawn. Like That stuff's always going to be there. But take a beat for you. Relax. Rejuvenate. I know it is well-deserved and well-earned because you're a little busy bee like me, aren't you? And something you may not know about me is I love little motivational messages. They always get me fired up and I keep a running list of ones that are especially catchy or speak to me in the notes app on my phone. So I end every podcast episode with one that I've noted down over the years in the hopes that you leave our time here each week feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to take on whatever comes your way this week. This week's Mel's motivational message is... Rest and motion, unrelieved and unchecked, are equally destructive. So if you are being a slug and laying around and being lazy and not getting anything done in life, not great. But also, if you are someone who is constantly on the go, you don't know how to take a beat, how to relax, how to take time for you, and you're always planning things, filling up your calendar, having your calendar filled up, and you don't know how to say no, you don't know how to step back, and you don't know how to take time for you. There's somebody close to me who is this kind of person, and it kills me every single time that she talks about how busy she is, because I just know how horrible that's going to be long term for her, for her health, for her nervous system, for her stress levels. Like, it is an addiction, and For some people, they wear it as a badge of honor, and it's not. It's a lack of boundary setting, and it is you not taking the time for you that you really need, that people need. You need your brain to have time to be bored, reflect, and to get introspective. If you're constantly on the go and with people and doing activities, like 
Your brain's not having any downtime and it's going to catch up with you. You're not going to live as long as the rest. (laughs) Because both rest and motion, unrelieved and unchecked, are equally destructive. So remember that. Appreciate this downtime. Make it as productive or unproductive as you need it to be. But do not worry. Your pieces will sell. They are beautiful. You're doing great, sweetie. We're all in this boat together. Do not worry. It's all cyclical. It'll come back. Don't worry. I got you. All right. That's it for now. I appreciate your time and I will catch you guys next week.